old time windmill. One thing that I had always thought of doing was building a substantially sized wind turbine. One that would be as low tech as possible, so it would be inexpensive and simple to build and maintain by a do-it-yourselfer. I don't think making a horizontal wind generator like the one you see behind me is very practical for most people because it needs to be aerodynamic and it has to be able to handle rough winds if you want it to last any amount of time. I built a couple before and they lasted a while but then they eventually destroyed themselves in rough winds. So that leaves me with considering a vertical axis wind turbine. I think most people know the difference between a horizontal wind generator and a vertical one. The one I'm looking at right now in front of me is a horizontal wind generator. The axle is horizontal with the ground, it's parallel with the ground. And it has a propeller on front and it has a tail on the back that turns it into the wind and the propeller spins when the wind blows. Now in a vertical axis wind turbine, the axle will be perpendicular to the ground, vertical, up and down. I turn this one just so you get the idea. It's kind of like the whirly bird you'd have on top of your roof to ventilate your attic. This is a whirly bird I have on top of my roof. It's used for venting the attic. It spins with the wind and it has a vertical axle. And this is what I have in mind with the wind turbine I want to build. Something similar but bigger and of my own design. There are many designs out there for vertical axis wind turbines and I got a couple of my own that I want to try out. This first one I'm going to try out is going to be similar to my rotating flow turbine I use for my steam turbine except on this one the wind is going to be acting from the exterior. Basic, this is the end view and basically what this is is a drum with slanted slits on the sides where the wind can enter and spin around. And this is going to be driven by friction as it strikes the sides here. It's going to be rubbing up against these sides making the turbine turn. And it'll be striking other air too and pushing that along and then it'll exit out the center. And I think I'd like to employ some wind diverters too eventually because I think that will help quite a bit and actually these can be used as a support for the turbine. So my first one I'm going to make just with some bicycle rims that I have and I think it will be pretty easy to put together. I think I got everything already. It won't be real big or anything but I'll get to see how well this will actually work. So I'm going to get at that right now. Assembly is underway. I did a very inexpensive covering of the ends here. This, I left the center open, but I just got plastic and masking tape. Just because this is going to be a trial. I got the whole thing assembled. is 26 inches in diameter. I'll try this first, and then maybe I'll 
increase this gap here so maybe like 30 inches in diameter and the way I got this put together at two bicycle wheels I <laughs> repurposed and what I found out that fit on the end is this fitting right here is a half inch pipe thread to three eighths inch uh, compression fitting and that compression fitting fits right over the axle in the bike and that nut fits right in there so you can tighten it up and I have that on the inside in between there I got a six inch uh, piece of pipe in there and then I'll just stick another piece of pipe in here the axle won't be rotating that'll just be secured just the turbine is going to turn on this and it was a very inexpensive way to put this together and I didn't have to buy anything that's one of the things I like when something's so simple I can usually just find stuff in my uh, junk piles so I'll put this together and I'll set it up and we'll see what happens Check the wind speed too now. Sixteen miles an hour. It's not powering anything except itself, but it does have quite a bit of torque. It's spinning up pretty good. I cut my fingers off by doing that. I rip my glass out there. Oh. Oh. Now this is just a small test model. I just wanted to see if it actually would have any potential. When I talk about a substantially sized wind turbine, I was thinking more like over 8 feet in diameter. 8, 10, 12, 16 feet in diameter. But it's just something I would gradually build up to. I don't want to jump into anything right away and waste a lot of money on something big that doesn't work. So I'm going to gradually build up to something bigger. This horizontal wind generator that I was showing earlier, it's a Whisper 600. It's something I bought when I was living off-grid back in the 1980s and 90s after the ones I made failed. I wanted something dependable. And this was top of the line back then. This has got a six-foot blade, and it's supposed to put out 600 watts. I think it was about an 18 mile an hour wind. And it did what it would said it would do, but it really wasn't as quiet as a whisper. And actually, it was pretty noisy when it started to overspeed and 
in gusty winds too. It's got a tilt back control and this would wobble and you'd hear all kinds of noises coming from it. But it did what it was supposed to do. And like I said, it still works, but I'm not sure if I want to put this one up or not. I think the vertical axis wind turbines are quieter, but there's still a lot to consider in building one, especially like the powertrain. I know the bigger in diameter you get, the lower the RPMs is going to be at the shaft. So do you want the shaft turning and have some kind of gearing at the bottom to turn a generator or an air compressor? Or you can take it off the outer diameter of the turbine itself. You can attach some magnets and have them pass through some wire to generate electricity that way. I think some people have done that. You know, the rotational velocity is pretty high at the outer rim of the turbine. So I have a lot to think about yet, and I'm going to keep working at it. I'll see you in the next update.